Tell the truth Monday. Really pleased with our victory over Florida. Really pleased with all the players that stepped up. Uh, brought some tremendous energy to our practice. I'm pleased with the coaching staff. They fought together. It was a hard-fought victory. Uh, we're we're going to enjoy this today. We're a 24-hour roll. Plus four turnover margin. On offense, great play by the offensive line. I think they're the most – no, I don't think. I know they're the most improved unit on our football team. Tyron Davis-Price for 287 yards. What a tremendous night. Ran the ball hard. Uh, no turnovers on offense. On defense, four interceptions. Scored on a big – a big. it was a big turnover. And held them to 136 yards, almost half of the yards they were giving up rushing. Glenn Logan helped us in the middle. I thought Neil Farrell had his best game as a Tiger. And on uh, special teams, we blocked an extra point. A lot of good things. Uh, we're going to show it uh, in the team meeting today. We're going to celebrate the victory, and then we have to move on, on to Ole Miss. We'll talk about Ole Miss a little bit. As far as uh, Lane, I think that Lane is, if not the best play caller in the country, one of the top three best play callers in the country. He has an outstanding football mind. He's doing a great job at Ole Miss. I'm very happy for him. I know that uh, he's a fighter, and uh, he comes from a football family. I know he's going to have his team ready to play. Uh, Matt Corral is one of the top players in the country. Uh, he's, uh, he's very fast. Uh, can run the football, throw the football. The thing about you can see Matt Corral, play, he plays with his heart. He plays with character, and he's very tough. They have the third-ranked offense in the country. They're very hard to stop. Any questions? Yeah, hey, Coach. Um, there was a report that came out this morning that Coy Moore has entered the transfer portal. Is that something you can confirm? Um, and I also have just a quick follow-up. Yeah, uh, I, have not, I have not talked to Coy. Uh, and if he has entered the transfer portal, I don't know anything about it. Okay. And then, um, you know, there was also some news this morning that it sounds like Matt Corral was pretty beaten up um, in that last game against Tennessee. Um, Coach Kiffin doesn't know if he's going to be ready to play this week. Could you just talk about you know their quarterback room as a whole and yeah. maybe some of you guys know about their backups as well? Well, we just started you know uh, looking at them. Obviously, uh, we just started studying Ole Miss. I've been looking at Matt Corral all morning, and we're expecting him to play. But we're going to we're going to study a second team quarterback. But knowing Matt and knowing mm -hmm. Coach Kiffin, he's kind of throwing me a, a smoke screen. <laughs> Yeah, maybe so. Hey, Ed, uh, Scott Rappelay. Um Obviously, Ty Davis Price has played great uh, these last two weeks, but fi but but fifty eight carries total. Um, are are you are you eager to get someone else a little more involved in the running game uh, because of that? And if so, who might that be? Yes, we'd love that. We'd love to. But you know what, Ty was doing such a good job that we wanted to give him the football. He kept on coming off the field, field coach, give me the ball, give me the ball, I am, go get it. And uh, but we'd like to get the young guys in, Corey Connor. We'd like to get uh, Amani in, get get them some reps, uh, get those guys some repetitions and get them some snaps. But as long as Ty is running like he is, we're going to give him the ball as many times as he can handle it. Hey, Coach, good morning. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, Jeray Jenkins. I know you've recruited this country mm -hmm. coast to coast. How many players have you gotten out of Gina, Louisiana? And, uh, <laughs> Just what, talk about the, you know his, his yeah. big performance. Very proud of Jeray. Very proud of Jeray. Um, um, several times I named him team captain. He's a leader for us. Come from Gina, obviously went through a um, huge hardship right when he got here. Overcame it. Uh, his uh, family's proud of him. His high school coach is proud of him. Uh, the whole town of Gina's proud of him. Uh, he's an excellent young man. A uh, big time game uh, in a big. He made some big plays in a big time game. I'm proud of him, and I'm, I'm glad that he stuck with it. And, you know, there were some times where some freshmen were getting maybe more balls than he was. He never said nothing. He kept on working. Ultimate team player. And can I ask you about the uh, the touchdown on fourth down? Max seemed to do an amazing job of body control. Yeah. He did like a 360 and then yeah. threw the touchdown. Yeah, there, there was two guys on block. They were they were coming. They were blitzing and. Uh, they will get us everything we got. I thought it was a great call by Jake Peets and an excellent play by Max by keeping his balance and getting the, getting through the ball. Hey, Coach O, Garland Gill, Fox 8 New Orleans here. Uh, I know yesterday or last night you, you told us you talked to two recruits uh, yesterday. Uh, this morning you lost a significant recruit from the New Orleans area. Yeah. What, what's the message to recruits going forward mm -hmm. uh, with, with uh, the early signing day right around the corner? Well, you know, I'm going to continue to recruit for LSU. 
And uh, just because I'm not going to be here, LSU hasn't changed. They're, they're a great school with a great tradition. You know, from the state of Louisiana, it's a, it's a big uh, plus for you to come to school at LSU. A lot of great players before have come to LSU and had a lot of success. So I'm going to continue to sell LSU. And uh, we've sort of gone over it a, a lot, I guess, but like the, the offensive line, I mean, you call it you know, the most favorite position group. Just how has this changed really so fast? Well, I, I, I think you're, you're seeing it, Wilson, as fast, okay? But I've seen it um, in practice in little increments. And it's ever since Coach Davis has come, and I know what he's trying to teach him, and I know the difference between him and Coach Craig, I can notice a difference. And it just took a little while for our guys to get used to. But I, I, know, I know what you're saying, that, that, that we, now we're running the ball much at a, a much better pace right now. But I've seen little increments in practice. Like it's a bump combo. The guys are getting off the ball and attacking guys off of the football. And now he's put it all together. And finally, we're all healthy. I think you're seeing a combination of, I think Coach is a great coach. And we got some good players believing in his scheme and they're healthy. Hey, Ed, Adam Hunsucker. Um, do you remember when you first met Lane Kiffin um, in your career? And yeah. how was your relationship with him evolved from yeah. being a co-worker to your boss and now, I guess, a rival on the field? I remember I'm with uh, Pete Carroll, and he asked me a question. He says, Eddie, I can hire a, an older, experienced coach, or I can hire a young, go get it coach that I think can help us in recruiting. I said, well, why don't we get a guy that can help us in recruiting? And it was Lane Kiffin. Uh, he was a young coach in Colorado State with Sonny Lubick, I do believe, which was Monty Kiffin's son. And Monty and Lane are best friends. And I remember sitting in the uh, – sitting in the um, – recruiting um, meeting. I was a recruiting coordinator and we were um, evaluating some talent and I liked the guy and Lane didn't. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? He was right. And uh, he, he earned my respect. He earned my respect from day one. Uh, Lane and I became very close, me being the recruiting coordinator. He was our out-of-state recruiter. He brought in some tremendous, in fact, he taught us how to recruit out-of-state at USC. He brought in a lot of number one draft picks. He recruited uh, Every, every day he could. He was on the road seven days a week, working from Florida to New York. I think the guy's a tireless recruiter. He's a great recruiter, and he's a great evaluator of talent. Hey, Coach. Leah Van from The Advocate. Um, I'm just wanting to ask about recruiting again. What are you telling these recruits when it comes to like them being really sold on you being their head coach? I know recruiting is a lot about relationships. Yeah, you know what? It's, uh, that I can't change, obviously. But I do know that, like I said, you know, there's a lot of things LSU can sell. Uh, there's, you know, LSU, you come to LSU, you're going to get a great education, you're going to network, none of that's going to change. You're going to have a chance to play in the SEC, none of that changes. You're going to come here and compete against some of the best players in the country, so none of that changes. Hey, good morning, Coach. I got uh, two questions. One, I'll start with the Lane one. Um, what was that? What is that relationship like? You're a little older than him. Yeah. Is it a big brother, little brother? You know, like good needling fun because he does seem like a, you know a fun fun guy. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's like that. Sometimes it's like best friends. Sometimes it's coach to coach. It all depends. But we we do have the utmost respect for each other, and uh, we do know each other's strengths and weaknesses, and then we've kind of fed off of it when we coached together. And uh, I'll never forget when I went to Tennessee, he said, I'm going to treat you like the assistant head coach. And he, he actually did. He gave me a lot of responsibility. We worked well together. You know, obviously we won two championships at USC together. We built that recruiting class. We all worked hand in hand, me, him, and Coach Carroll, and all the other assistants were always together. So we got to know each other very well. And then my other one would be about Corral again, watching their game <laughs> against Tennessee. He, he is a willing runner. Um, a lot more physical, I guess, than I would expect that position yeah. with what they want to do. Yes. Could you speak to that aspect of his game? Yeah, and he ran, he ran a 21 flat, um, 200 meters. Fast, strong, he's competitive. And uh, he feeds off the energy of the game. And uh, the, the quarterback draws, the quarterback runs, and him, him just extending plays with his feet. He's going to fight, push to get to the goal line, whatever it takes. He's a tremendous competitor. I, I believe if he's not the best player in the country, one of the best players in the country. Uh, hey, Coach, Shea Dixon here. Uh, when you face an offense like Ole Miss and, and you're game planning, I guess, overall, 
does it shift any? Is there a sort of mentality of play keep away or run the football, or is it just kind of stick to what you do? Well, if you play keep away, you might not score as many points as you need to play. That's that's got to come into play, and uh, there's going to have to be some ball control uh, if he's you know he goes fast every down, and our, our defense is going to have to substitute. And if he's scoring at a high rate, there's going to have to be some ball control to give our defense a break. But if he's scoring at a high weight rate, that means we have to score at a high rate. It all depends how the game's going. Do you guys, are you prepping for this as whoever gets to 51st, whoever gets to 61st is going to win this game? Yeah, I don't want to say that. No, you know, it all depends. You know, it, uh, we'll see. You know, hopefully we play better defense than that. And a couple of things, if I could, please. Uh, did, kind of a funny moment. Did you see Kiffin get hit by the golf ball? And and, and what did you think of that? And two, uh, how do you motivate the guys over the last stretch of the season when they know that you're not going to be here? Well, uh, first of all, I've been an interim coach already. And uh, so I, I feel that I think the pressure has been let out, uh, 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 let out the tank. I think everybody was hearing all the stuff now. Now it's done. Now we can just go out and concentrate on football and play football. I think we're going to play a lot freer. I think that we're going to have some great practices. Our guys want to beat Ole Miss. Our guys like winning. So there's a lot of young players mixed in with some old players. So I, I think that we're going to practice very well. And we know that uh, Ole Miss presents a challenge. Everybody sees it on TV. Everybody sees the offense. So we're going to step up to the plate as a challenge. I did not see the uh, actual golf ball being thrown at him or him being hit. I heard about it, but uh, I, I, I believe in that. <laughs> hey, Coach, last year it took a, a Herculean effort basically from uh, Kayshawn and Max to, to yeah. out-duel against yeah. Corral and, yeah. and that offense. It seems like the, this year the offense is finally finding a new identity, a new groove. How do you feel about the ability to keep pace with them going into Saturday? Well, I do believe that uh, they're going to present a challenge. We have to play better defense than we did last year, but the interceptions and the turnovers that we had last year helped us. I don't believe when you go against Lane that field goals are going to help you much. Although we have the best field goal kick kicker, in my opinion, in the country, I think any time that you get in scoring territory, you have to go down. You have to go forward on fourth down like we did last year to score as many points as we can. And then how do you teeter the balance between ball control and not settling and playing keep away? Yeah, it all depends on uh, uh, the course of the game. If, if our defense is tired and we need a break, we're going to have to go ball control. But if they're scoring at a rapid pace and we got to score at a rapid pace to keep them up, keep up with them, we're going to have to do that. It all depends on the pace of the game. Hey, Ed, how you doing today? Um, you talked about the offensive line being healthy. Um, what's the status of Chase and Hines and also uh, Anthony Bradford got a little dinged up early? Yeah. And, and also, how did Marlon Martinez um, uh, play when he yeah. got to play a lot? Yeah, Anthony's fine. Um, yeah, Anthony's fine. I, I, I thought we were going to have to get half the team to pick him up off the field. He's so heavy. I, I, I tease him all the time. I love Anthony. I coach, recruited him for Michigan. He's a great young man. And he's playing very good right now. But he's fine. He can play. Uh, Martin Martinez played very well uh, for his first time out. I was very proud of him, the way he played. Chase Ian Hines is questionable right now. We're doing some more research. Uh, he's getting more tests. I don't know if he's going to be available this week. It, right now, it's questionable. Thanks. Hey, Coach, this is uh, Josh Sidley with Louisiana Grand Football. Uh, did, uh, did Coach Falk, do you know if Coach Falk talked to uh, Ty Davis Price after the game uh, this week about the about his accomplishment? Uh, I know Coach Falk was on the, the 97 squad uh, that beat Florida, right. and now, now Ty being on this squad, you know, that uh, that was also such a, a heavy underdog mm -hmm. against the, that Florida squad yeah. and his accomplishment breaking the, the single game rushing record. Hey, you know what? That's a great comparison. And I think that was very good on your part, Josh. In fact, Kevin had given me the, uh, the cover of Sports Illustrated when he ran all over the Gators. So I think that uh, that's a great comparison. I didn't even think of it. I'm sure they talked. Uh, Kevin's very close to his players. 
I'm sure they talk. I, I don't know for sure they talk, but I'm sure they have. Hey, Coach, uh, Steve Bolton, WZZN. I've got a couple, if I could, please, sir. You mentioned uh, Neil on how well he played along the line. What impressed you most on what you saw in that game Saturday, Coach? You know, I do believe with, uh, with Glenn Logan coming back, he and Glenn are best friends. They played with each other for four years. They feed off of each other. And the type of blocks that they were given, uh, Neil was a favorite blocks for him to play. And uh, he, I tell you what, it started off with the first snap. He came in, he got out, of, coming out of his hips, got underneath that guard's chin, knocked him back, and it was almost like that the whole game. And he was very active. He, I think, he could feel the weight of the guard going forward. So he's giving him a little head fake and going outside and beating him a bunch of times. Was in the backfield. The guy played his best game. And coach, uh, with this being such a high-profile job and just the pressure cooker that is being at a Power Five job. What is it like today now moving forward for you? Is maybe some of the pressure off? What What is it like for you, sir? Well, everything, every day is the same for me, one day at a time. Pressure or no pressure. You know, I, I put a lot on myself, and that's all that matters. Ed, uh, you know, first game with Sage Ryan at nickel and, and Cordo Flop moving outside. What did you think of the job those two did in that role? Very well. Excellent. A+. Plus. Specifically with Sage in his first start, was there anything that you noticed that you really liked? I really like his ability to adjust. He's very smart. Um, you know, in practice, there were some things that we had to adjust with, and it took him a couple of reps. But once he gets it, he gets it. He's able to cover. He's, he's kind of like a corner slash, nickel, uh, corner slash safety playing at nickel. He has the physical attributes of a safety, and he has the foot speed of a corner. He's a perfect nickel for us, and he's a great competitor. Hey, and to try to um, piggyback here off Steve's question, you mentioned the pressure being lifted off, off of you with this team. Has that changed at all, kind of your, your mindset of coaching in these games or just how you're approaching this mentally uh, going into the end of the year? Let me clarify. Steve mentioned the pressure of letting off. I didn't agree to that. And, uh, just living one, one, one day at a time. That's how I'm going to live the rest of my life. But you know what? I, I do believe it gives uh, the team some clarity that, you know, okay, it's done now. We understand. I've talked to the team. Now they, nobody has to talk about that no more. We don't have to listen to that no more. Now we know what's ahead of us. And now the focus could be on Ole Miss. The focus could be on football. And really the focus has always been and it should be here on our players. I want the best for our football players. So if all that ha uh, that happened yesterday helps our players, I think it's great. Coach, I was just curious, um, the game against Florida, given what you were playing with and, and the substitutions that you had to make on your roster, were you disappointed in the defensive performance, kind of knowing what you're going to be facing this weekend as well? Well, or, or, or were you pleased because, you know, you had all those changes that you had to make? Okay. I was pleased the first half, right? <laughs> I really, really worried the second half. But I, I knew this, you know, Dan is a great game day caller. And yeah. he's going to find stuff. That, that's how they work. They're going to find stuff that can trick you. And, and we got tricked with a high discipline right there. He gave us some different things. Uh, gave us kind of the same type of play, but with a different player in a different position. And it took our guys a little time to adjust. And all the stuff was was eye discipline. And if we can have great eye discipline, we're going to have to have it against Lane. He, here's what Lane's going to do. He's going to see all the players, all the plays that have given us problems, and he's going to run, at a, run it at us again to see if we fix it. Hey, Coach, Matthew Bruni here for 24-7 Sports. Um, BJ Ocalari, obviously, big game stepping up for Ali Gay and Andre Anthony. Uh, just what did you see from his performance specifically? I um, mean, getting off the ball and getting yeah. uh, to the corner. Great rush on the edge. He, he beat the guy outside one time, inside the next time. And, and you know, I thought he and Sony played pretty good on the edge with the quarterback for the most part. We made a couple of mistakes. But that was a good athlete in space right there. I thought they held the quarterback in check. They had a lot of responsibility. Our defensive ends had more responsibility against the Florida Gators than they had all year as far as quarterback reads, uh, bluff plays, rushing the passer, traps, and all that stuff. 
I thought Andre did a very good job of preparing all of our ends. Hey, Coach, you talked a little bit about Jack Mashburn's success of rocking on Saturday. Can you kind of explain how a former high school quarterback who's listed under 230 pounds has yeah. success of blocking like he came in college? Well, he's grown a little bit, obviously, and Jack's tough. He's really tough, and I think that uh, he's been uh, waiting for his time here. He's always wanted to play at LSU, and he's got great hips. He's got great explosion. He has good feet, and he's very smart. And so I think all those attributes helped him. Uh, he's our starting tight end, in my opinion, right now. He's one of our better blocking tight ends. He's a great young man. I'm so happy for him. Is that it? Go Tigers.